I swear this is gonna be my last time I actually try to record this because it's already like 12 a.m. But anyways, hey everyone, this is Awesome Joey Teen, aka Joey Army What's Up, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Pokemon Gym Leader Challenge. And today I'm up up against Lincoln. Now let me tell you something special about this episode. This episode is gonna be a post recording, and the reason because it deserved a voiceover. So in this episode, I'm gonna go be talking about how I built my team because I didn't mention I'm not gonna mention it for the other any of the other other episodes. And the second thing I'm talking about is the ways I could have done this differently in terms of this battle. And lastly, I don't even know. I'll talk about the future, what I'm going to do at the end of the battle. Or I'll probably talk about it towards the end since I know the outcomes and what might happen. So I'm not going to spoil it to you guys. Are you going to still have to check it out? I mean, you could go ahead and just zoom to the end. But what, what's the fun in doing that, right? But anyway, let's start off with the, my team. And on my side, I had Hydreigon, Gudra, Flygon, Dragapult, and I think Drilldon and Turtonator. There you go. And on my opponent's side, I ha they had Clefable, uh, Grimmsnarl, Glade, Berserker, Umbreon, and Aromatisse. I did it. I think I did it exactly in that same order that I remember because it's been my a thousand attempt. So, anyways, for starters, let's talk about how I built this team. So I built this team basing off of Hydreigon and built it from there from its weaknesses and its strengths and what I could do. So what I decided to do with Hydreigon is, or with the rest of my team is, have Hydreigon as the lead and two defensive Pokemon that I found within Gudra and Duraldon. And then after that, that was it for my team build. I just added on the remaining Pokemon and I decided to just add power to it. And that's where this Flygon came in through and... Dragapult and Turtonator, and I didn't. You're gonna learn. I'm. I learned throughout these couple of battles because I'm already at the point of this recording. I edited already to episode five of the Gym Leader challenges, so I am from the future, by the way. So this episode, episode two, should technically be episode six. I mean episode five, but it's not because I. You know, this is gonna be a very special voiceover. So, anyways. That's pretty much how I built my team. I had Hydreigon, my two defensive Pokemon, and the third one being <laughs> Turtonair, which I will soon realize later on throughout this Gym Leader challenges. And then the last two remaining Pokemon being Flygon and Dragapult were all pure power. So that's how I based off my Dragon team. Now, I learned that the offense slash defensive won't work out always. And I learned this in this battle. So... First, now that I talk about how I built my team, and now you could get a, a sort of idea of movesets on how to do about it, let's start off with Turtonator, since Turtonator is the first Pokemon on screen. So right now, we have my boy, Turtonator. Now, he is a defensive, which I remember because he's a calm nature. Now, he's supposed to be bulky on the special defensive side. So right now, before I talk about anything else, he just triggered his blender policy so this is a blender policy this is not a specific set i just put on an item because i don't know what other item to add on to turtonator so that is exactly what happened so turtonator's blender policy activated early in the battle is because i missed my will o wisp now that's how blender policy works now if i miss any type of move doesn't matter what it is if i miss it triggers it and it adds a plus two speed stat to me which is pretty dope honestly but it backfired in this battle because unfortunately they um this aromatis used trick room now onto the moves i added on churchinator so churchinator has will-o-wisp roar uh shell trap and dragon pulse now that is a very weird move set uh, best believe um i didn't believe this churchinator was meant to be for doubles but you know what i didn't know this at the time and the for singles, I decided to just burn everything and roar it and do the best that I could have done and try to burn everything. And that's what I was trying to do with the Pokemon that in came. And that was that Berserker. <laughs> now that I talk about his moveset, he was just supposed to be a defensive wall slash doing chip damage. I think that's why I had him here. Honestly, and now that I think about it, I think that's why he was here in the first place. So now I talk about Turtonator. Turtonator. Let me talk about the very beginning of this battle. On who we led out with. I led up with um, Flygon. And for the very reason I led up with Flygon. Because I didn't mention it earlier. Is because. I could have lost Flygon. And I would have been okay. Which now thinking it over. I think I was wrong. 
that's but that's what I try to fix it with my U training at the beginning of the battle because I wanted to switch him out because I I didn't realize maybe not then but now is that he's gonna be the cleanup Pokemon because he is a choice bandit set with the moves which I came back to him and also I wanted to preserve this flag on for this very Berserker because he is the answer to the Steel type. And any other Pokemon, and also it also serves as cleanup because it is a choice band set, as I mentioned earlier, it, who is rocking Earthquake to do massive damage. You turn to get out of sticky situations, like at the first situation of this battle. Um, and then I have Fire Punch to deal with Ice types, and I have, which I didn't know at the time until now, by the way. Shh. <laughs> and then I have Outrage just to do maximum dra damage. I could have had Dragon Claw, but eh, let's go for maximum damage. <laughs> Let's go for Reckness. So, as you can see right now, I don't know if this was a bad play of keeping Flygon in and try to do as much tip damage as I could have, but that's what I decided to do with it and live with it. I mean, my best option for this, if if I had Komomo, I would have switched into it and then just scared it off. So it could go to some other fairy type and then from there I could have just decided. But at the time I didn't have Komomo train and I don't even have him train now. So, right now, I decided to finish off um, Umbreon because I hate this Pokemon, and you would know that if I had recorded my Dragon Gym Leader battle with the Dark type, and that's why I hate Umbreon because it's seen as a tank. <laughs> that's, and I don't think I beat Umbreon in that in that battle either. So, go figure. So now we have Sirius. Now Sirius, here's the thing. If I, if I knew, which I never could have predicted the Sucker Punch coming from Grimmsnarl, which would have been very helpful had I known. Because I could have predicted this and gone into Diane, which would have been a cleanup switch. But knowing me, I'm going to go into Diane either ways now, because it's a clean switch. If I go to Gudra, that'd be dumb. <laughs> which I did not, because I'm going to go into Diane. Am I? Yeah, I'm gonna go to Dan. Man, I'm thinking so much about this. I was like, what am I gonna do to deal with the Grim Snarl? Now, I was thinking also at the time because I need Grim Snarl. I need Derilodon to take care of his other three fairy types that he has. One of them being his Aromatesis, being the second one, and the third one being Clefable. Because I had no clue how I was gonna deal with that. And that's exactly what I did. So now, what you're about to see is one of the biggest mistakes that cost me probably. Not the battle, should I say. Well, actually, it would have impacted the finale of this battle. Because right now, if you saw, I clicked Solar Beam. Now, that was an accidental misclick. And he knows that already before this recording because we discussed it afterwards. Now, I, I'm pretty sure he was as confused as I... I I'm pretty sure he was kind of confused as to why Solar Beamed, right? <laughs> why not Flash Cannon? And now you know why. Now, in terms of lagging, tail. I don't exactly know what it does. I've read it before, but you know what? We could find out right now. Let me get my phone real quick. Use Google for once and see what's up. And while I'm doing that, which I'll probably talk about lagging tail later on. So let's talk about Gerilodon. I actually never talked about Gerilodon. As you can see, once I use Trick, I had an Assault Vest. Now this Gerilodon was meant to be a tank, like I mentioned below before. He is an aroma. I mean, aroma I was thinking about aroma tease. So, this is an assault vest Dureldon who's invested in HP, special defense, and special attack, and a little bit on speed to speed a couple of things, such as Rotom Wash. Shh. If someone has a Rotom Wash, don't spread this word, alright? You the <laughs> Please. I want to try to kill off one Rotom with this. <laughs> but yeah. So this Dereladon is supposed to be bulky and then also very attack at the same time. So that is why he is... Actually, I never invested any special defense, did I? Watch, I did a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. Wait. A little tiny bit. But yeah, I did a little tiny... No, actually, no, I never invested into special defense. That's some other Pokemon. I'm confusing it with someone else. So, there you go. So this is going to be more of an offensive defensive. So... Um, the moves are, uh, I'm actually confusing them. So this was supposed to be a defensive tank? 
because his special defense is already as good as it is. I believe it. I'm confusing the two. Wow, I'm confusing the two. But anyways, I'm rocking the moves. Flash Cannon, Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Solar Beam. Now I have Solar Beam to only use when I'm Gigantamax. And, I, and after that, I won't use Solar Beam because it's a liability. Unless the sun is up at the time. But I have Thunderbolt to deal with water types once I'm out of this form. So I could do effective damage. Or in cleanup, basically. So I'm sorry if I confused it with the set of drill down. All you need to know is that this was a very... It's supposed to be a defensive physical attacker. That's it. I mean, special attacker. And that's all you need to know about my boy Drilldon. Now, Drilldon was the last Pokemon that I ever, ever EV trained. And he's my favorite shiny. Uh, I know I think I mentioned this in episode 3 or 4 and 5. One of those two. I don't remember which one exactly. But yeah. So now, here is one of the plays that I did wrong again. Which I wish I could have just stayed in and see what's up with, with Max Lightning. And see what I could have done differently. And the reason I switched out was because I was afraid of close combat, which he revealed earlier throughout the battle. And I did the most fatal mistake that cost me my Gudra. You're about to see why. I mean, I already spoiled it. I'm gonna switch into Gudra, so. <laughs> why am I gonna switch into a Pokemon that's defensive is not the best? So, since I'm gonna go into Gudra, let's talk about Gudra. My other tanky main Pokemon. And this one is, is a little mixture of both, just like Duraludon. Um, he's he's both invested into HP, defense, and special defense. I don't recall special attack, but he had it there just in case. So now, at this point, I said, man, frick. <laughs> I just wasted Gudra. Now, Gudra is not going to do anything in the field. Now, technically, that's not true because... My boy decided to switch out. He could have just killed me off. I don't know why he decided not to kill me off. I, I'm pretty sure. I think he was scared that I was not. He was not fast enough. So I think he wanted to save his berserker. I mean, I'm assuming because he switched out. And he switched out into Glade, which not sure why. But now that I think about it, I think he wanted to. Actually, as a matter of fact, hmm, good question. So he's going to switch into Galay because I'm already spoiling the rest of this battle. So <laughs> even though I said I wasn't. But yeah, this is what I mean by Gudra actually doing some job. Now, this is my 10th time watching this battle. 10th <laughs> time. Can you believe it? <laughs> but yeah, so this is where another play I could have predicted knowing that it was a fighting type, which my brain started to kick in towards my last battle that I had um, with being in episode five. So. My boy used the Drain Punch. Now, if I was a little bit smart at the time, I should have switched into Dragon Ball, and that would have just been an easy miss, and I could have killed him off with any move. Well, actually, no. I would have done Dragon Darts, and I think he would have been smart enough to switch out. I'm pretty sure he would have, knowing that he's a Psychic and Fighting type. So he might have switched out. So, Or he would have knocked me off. I don't know what he would have done. But I, I would have gone with Dragon Darts because that would have been the most effective move. But, oh well. We won't know the outcome anymore, so... Unless we rematch in the future, so... Which we will, I just don't know when. Once I have a little bit more experience, I'll go battle my guy again. And see what things could have been different. <laughs> so now that we talked about Gudra, let's go and talk about... Well, actually, I never talked about Gudra, huh? I finished talking about... So, Gudra was supposed to be just... A tank. That's all it was. To take a little bit of physical attacks, and then... Also special attack, since his special attack, I mean his special defense is already as good as it is. Now the moveset I ran on him was Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, no actually not Thunderbolt, Fire Blast, um, Sludge Bomb, and Muddy Water. That's the moveset. Am I saying it right? Sludge Bomb, Muddy Water, Draco Meteor, and Fire Blast. Yeah, that's the moveset. I could have changed it up a bit, but I kept it that set. Now... Onto the Pokemon that you're seeing right now. Now, Dragon Ball was just pure physical attacker. Pure physical attacker, speedy as always, and very fragile, which I soon learned. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And the way that this team was built was to be a double team, basically trying. Since it's fragile, I thought double team would be very useful on it. Now, here's the biggest mistake that I did on this battle. 
being that I didn't know about Gigantamax going through evasiveness. And that cost me my Dragon Ball, which I could have done a little bit where I could have done chip damage on my boy, but I decided not to, which oh well. That could have been played out differently. And the moveset I had on, on Dragon Ball was U-Turn to get that movability and then Dragon Darts and then followed with Phantom Force for damage for the ghost side. And then Double Team was just a raise of viciousness. That's pretty much the last Pokemon I have to talk about. And that is my team. I don't know what you guys think about it. Let me know in the description below. The only thing, the rookie move that I did was base it off of Hydreigon. But then again, I'm limited to certain Pokemon. And honestly, I'm sur you might you guys might be surprised of why I don't have Dracovish or any of the other Pokemon like Haxorus or Jump. And the reason is because it's this simple. I didn't even train them. And plus, I was kind of excited to get into this gym challenge, and I think I went a little bit above my eyes, and I was not ready. Definitely was not ready. Because I had no idea what I was getting myself into now. Now that I think about it, I need a break, and that's what I want to mention towards this end half. Since this end half, I don't want to spoil it, but you know what, I'll just spoil it. <laughs> I got bodied here. <laughs> this match was not mine. Uh, there was mistake. I mean, if had I taken out Grimstar, it would have been a different story. Maybe it could have been different and resulted in my win, but oh well. I may never know. But this was a GG battle, man. Um, Lincoln, great job, great match, and hope to battle you again in the in the future. Once you're champion, of course. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I, I might battle him before he becomes champion, or I don't know, whenever. But I will challenge him again in the future. And also... Last thing I want to talk about before this episode ends, because I have 40 seconds to talk about this, and it's um, in terms of this gym leader challenge. Now, in, my dragon gym will be closed all the way until April 18, because I want to take the time to go ahead and go about EV training some teams for double and singles, because I want to get a little bit of experience of both, since I see a lot of gym leaders do that. So I said, why not? I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, with that being said... Episode 5 will be the last Pokemon Gym Challenge I have on the channel. So, Episode 5 is going to be the last Gym Challenge you'll see for a while. Until I get back at it in April 18. So, starting April 18, I'll have start, I'll start recording more episodes and uploading them as soon as possible. Now, one of the major reasons why I am I'm late st stretching it all the way to April 18 is because... I have a lot of assignments and I've been so focused on editing that I didn't even think about homework. So I have to go and focus on that since I do have midterms and I want to focus on that more right now than Pokemon battles. And also, I want to build a new team because I want this battle to be a little bit more challenging for my challengers. And Lincoln, if you're still here, my boy, thanks for the great battle. Thank you for teaching me so much even afterwards because I don't, I don't think any other challenger has done that except for you. So Lincoln, shout outs to you. And with that being said, this has been Awesome Joe 18, and I'm going to get myself out of here. See you on episode 6, which will release some point in April 20th, 22, whenever I decide to finish that editing that episode. So, yeah. Deuces!